Greetings, Dimecast audience, and welcome to you both. Welcome to another episode on Lucene.net. This is a follow-up to the introduction to Lucene.net that aired recently. Derek Whitaker has graciously allowed me to abscond with the series, at least for this episode, while he uh, records something on, um, I don't remember, I think it was a rant on why VB.net doesn't include semicolons or something like that. Anyway, let's do a quick recap. In the previous episode, we went, walked through a very basic index writer and index searcher. We created the index. We're indexing the name, author, and ID for Dimecast episodes right here, tokenizing the name and the author, but not the ID. And then we did a search for the word NAT. Quick search results, get some res results back. Changes from the last code from the last episode. I've moved the index writer out of the test itself into a test fixture setup so that I can create more tests and not have to copy and paste that code from one test to another. I put it in a test fixture setup so that it doesn't get recreated every single time I run a test uh, for every test. Maybe your scenario requires that you do recreate the index for every test, maybe you don't. But I'm recreating it only for each test fixture. The second change I made is instead of using an in-memory index, I'm using the file system. Instead of creating a RAM directory, I specify the path to a folder. In this case, it's a relative folder path, but it could be an absolute path just as well. So I say index writer, I specify the, the folder where I want it to go, and I say true, which means I want to recreate the index. If I don't put true in there, it will append to the existing index, and you'll get duplicate uh, results back from that. The doc index will get created by default because I haven't specified an absolute path in the bin debug doc index. And here's the index from a previous test run that I did. That's basically what it looks like on the file system. So I've created a new test here and we're going to do a quick review and do another search for NAT, make sure we get the same results back, and we do, which is glorious. Now we're going to go a little deeper into the query parser. Say we want to do a search for NAT, but we don't want to include uh, config, uh, say NUnit, we don't want to include the word NUnit. Say we're the developers of MBUnit and we have a hate on for, uh, Jeff Brown has a hate on for anything that says NUnit, so he doesn't want NUnit to show up in his search results. There we go. We've dropped part two, which had the uh, the end unit results in there. And this is probably easier to see if, we see if we compare it with the original tests. Part two is missing, is included in this one, but not in these results down here. Very simple, very Google-like, very Googleish, very googly, which gives me a nice warm, fuzzy feeling. But now let's say we want to do a search for end unit, as well as the word tests. It's not case sensitive by default as well. So let's do a search for both NUnit and tests. We get creating tests with NUnit, adding un NUnit tests, but we also get these results here, which don't include the word tests. And as you might suspect, this means that Lucene by default is going to do an OR search. So it's going to search for all episodes with either NUnit or tests in the name. If you want to include both, just add a plus sign at the beginning. And now we're limited to, down to two. Uh, side note, it's also not going to include variations on the words that you specify, so we're not going to get um, ones that have, say, NUnit testing in them. You have to specify a different, I believe, a different analyzer for that, which we'll get into hopefully in future episodes. Say your search interface, you want to always use AND searches. It's a pain in the ass to have to put plus signs in front of everything or require your users to do so. After you create your parser, let's set our default operator. Operator AND. Now we don't need to include this, the, the plus signs. It will always use AND for those. Same results back glorious. Let's get a little bit more complicated. Let's take a look at 
our repository, I've added two at the bottom, research and development for the name of one episode, and another one called do the research or the development. Let's do a quick demonstration and say we want to search for a specific term, the term n unit tests. As you might suspect, just add quotes around it. And now we're limited to only one result that had the word n unit tests in it. Okay. Let's do a search for research and development. Actually, let's before we do that. <coughs> research development. Both terms. Research it has to have both terms in it because we've got a default of, of and in there. So we've got research and development, do the research or the development. Now if we s change that to an exact phrase, and we put research and development, we would expect to get back only one result. But we still get both. The reason being is that by default the standard analyzer is going to remove a bunch of stop words, some common words that are so common that they don't figure they're going to be re returned in any search results. And of course and is one of those stop words. So when you're indexing your your repository, it's going to remove the word and from the index. So if you think you're going to have to have a lot of searches that have the word and, that means you need to add it back into the index when you're in when you're doing creating your index. A number of ways of doing that, you can derive from the existing standard analyzer and change the stop words. You can create your own analyzer. Um, I'm going to do one way here equals new string and what we're going to take is the stop uh, sorry the standard analyzer stop words and we're going to remove the word and from them it's not a very big list it's it's about two dozen words but we're going to take and out of that list and when we create our standard analyzer, we can specify which stop words we want to use. If you don't specify, it'll use its standard ones. We have to provide an array. Now, when we index, create the index, we're going to include the word and, but that's not enough. We also have to specify when we're doing our search that we also want to search for the word and because again we're using the standard analyzer that's going to strip out the the word and when it parses our query copy and paste which is your cue that you shouldn't be copy and pasting this code as is stop words to array so now when we create the index we'll include the word and when we do our search, we'll also include our, the word and, and we've got it in the wrong spot here. Run our test again. Now we include the word research and development only. We don't include the other one because the other title didn't have the word and in it. So as you can imagine, you can get pretty deep into creating analyzers based on your specific needs. If you have industry specific terms that have stop words in them, then you have to consider adding them into the index. You have to consider creating your own analyzer. And in future episodes, hopefully we'll, we'll get into doing that and into um, some more on the different types of parsers uh, and queries that you can create. Uh, until next time, that's it for me.